Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today I've got something really cool that I've been kind of sitting on for a little while. A few months ago I took some of my extra RV satellite domes that I've just been accumulating and traded them to a viewer and fellow ham, Chandler in Zero TOR, and in return he swapped me this thing. So just what is this? Well, it's a CyberX CN 7500 a by Heavenly System, and this is a folding satellite dish. This is actually really cool. It uh, acts kind of like a big patio umbrella where the whole thing collapses down. It's supposed to have this little stand. So it's kind of the 1980s version of these little dish tailgaters. These are KU band for modern satellites. That thing is C band. Because C band is a lower microwave frequency and because some of the earlier satellites had lower power transmitters, this is a much bigger dish. This is what you used to see on people's houses back in the 70s and 80s. In fact, I still have one out in the yard, the rigid metal style that I have not had time to set up. This thing has been kicking around the yard for like a year or two now. I need to put this on my roof, but we've gotten very distracted with other projects like uh, this CyberX portable antenna. So let's open this thing up and see what we've got. I know there are a couple minor issues. Chandler said he has used it before, but a couple things have broken since then, so we might have to do some repairs. We've got a couple LNBs or feed horns here. This thing's really cool. Um, this LNB is basically the commercial version of those cantennas that I used to make out of Pringles cans back when you could steal people's Wi-Fi. This is just a metal cylinder, a couple little uh, active elements in there, and yeah, very simple. Heat sink and probably some circuits in there and then our uh, RF out. Now this one's actually in the 1700 to 2700 megahertz range, so we might be able to use this for those GOES weather satellites. That's pretty cool. So this thing comes with a really cool carrying case so you can take it, you know, out camping or in your RV or on your boat or whatever. I don't know how many people actually use these portably like that, but I guess it's theoretically possible. Um, unfortunately the carrying case has started to fall apart a little bit, the straps have come off, the zipper doesn't really close, but I don't actually intend to take this out camping. We might take it out to Sandland, we'll have to see. But if we do, you know, we can just roll it up in something else or get like a golf club or a ski bag or something. Here's some of the mounting base, little stabilizing legs, some ground stakes and spare hardware. Got a little uh, DVB-S2 receiver. I don't actually know uh, how to use these. Chandler threw in a couple little receiver boxes. I'm gonna have to learn what to do with these things. I also have all this Axeman stuff for 1970s, 1980s C-band. We've got an earth station receiver, stereo adapter, satellite locator, satellite positioner. I basically went into Axeman and just grabbed everything that looked like it was for a satellite. I asked them if they had any more and they, they said I'd already bought all of it, so... Um, don't know if any of this will be useful, but maybe we'll play around with it, maybe we won't. Okay, if I can get this out of the bag, we now are down to the actual dish. This definitely has some E.T. vibes already. I don't know if I actually have room to open this up in here. I might need to get a bigger garage. Yeah, that, that thing's pretty cool. That is definitely some 70s retro space punk action right there. And look, we've even got a third L&B. This one's actually a C-band, uh, dual polarity, so this one would be for TV or any data streams that happen to still be using C-band. So the way that you fully deploy and tension this is these little arms clip into these ears, and yes, this one's broken, and then these little hooks go up here, and the whole thing kind of folds open. You, you clip these uh, levers down, and that tensions everything. So with this being broken, not 100% sure if it's going to work the way it is. I'm not sure if we can fix that or not. We'll have to look into this a little more. It's really hard to even get it open enough to get these little lever clips into place. Alright, 
right, well, I think that's how this is supposed to look. Um, I might still need to adjust a few things like the L and B positioning. This thing was a little loose, I tightened it up, but I'm not sure exactly how far away from the dish it's supposed to be. So we'll have to look at the manual, we'll have to mess with that. But uh, yeah, this looks like it's in pretty good shape. All the little fiberglass arms are good, nothing's broken. I don't see any rips in the net, so knock on wood, this thing should be ready to go out and pick up some satellite signals. So I'd like to go outside and start testing this dish, but right now it's just snowing like crazy and half of my line of sight in the yard is taken up by this giant snow pile. So I thought I had a break in the weather where it had stopped snowing for a few minutes, but then as soon as I got the dish set up, it started snowing again. We may or may not get anything out of this, but we're going to go ahead and try and see what happens. I'm pretty sure that's the motto of this entire channel. We have our incredibly professional ground station set up here, consisting of the CyberDeck laptop, the old briefcase full of satellite junk, all set up in a laboratory-grade sterile environment, wedged between the table saw and the milk crate collection. We've fired up GQRX, we've hooked up the satellite dish to our RTL-SDR with the power injector in line, and we are getting some satellite data feeds on here. Um, not sure if they're what we're looking for yet, but we're going to keep snooping around. Next, we're going to hook up to our little GT Media Finder here. I think we're aimed at Galaxy 13, so we're going to go ahead and do a blind scan. Okay, we've got nothing. So either our dish is misaligned, our L and B skew is off, or it's just too much snow to get a signal. I still haven't found any TV stations on Galaxy 13, but I found this really interesting signal. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks cool on the display. Here's another apparent data stream down on the very low end of the C-band. Now I know all these signals are coming from Galaxy 13 because if I go out and wiggle the dish just a little bit off of the right positioning, the signal fades out completely. So we're pretty much aimed correctly. We're getting the strongest signal we can on various frequencies here. So I'm still not sure why we can't get any TV transponders. Okay, we've continued to mess with this, trying to get the absolute strongest signal we can get on GQRX. So there's not just the azimuth and elevation, there's also how far away the LNB is from the focal point. So I can move this in and out to adjust that. And then there's the LNB skew, so how far it's rotated one way or another. And I can just rotate this uh, one way or another for that. Now uh, Chandler marked out some satellites on here, so we've got Galaxy 16. We've got a couple other ones. Um, I'm just, I'm still trying to get Galaxy 13 over here because it's about the only thing I can see between the house and the giant snow pile. All right, we are finally getting um, a recognizable TV transponder where there should be one. It might be a little hard to see on the screen here, but we've got a pretty good signal coming in and we're going to switch over to the little V8 satellite meter and see if we've actually got TV. All right, so we're trying to blind scan again on Galaxy 13. Now we are seeing a couple transponders popping up again, but we're still not seeing any TV stations. We're also starting to run out of juice on the little GT Media Finder. That's really the main downside of this V8 Finder. It just has terrible battery life. All right, we've actually got a couple TV stations that just popped up. This is new. We haven't been able to see these before. And it looks like NASA TV has popped up. That's actually one that I was looking for on here. All right, and we are watching TV on a C-band satellite. Here's one of the NASA channels. It's a little bit pixelated. I could probably adjust the dish a little bit more to get a better signal. All right, so this is actually pretty cool. I'm watching a live feed from the International Space Station, which is coming to me in a rather roundabout way. It's getting beamed down from the station to NASA, uplinked back from NASA to Galaxy 13 satellite, and then back down to me. So it's taking a very inefficient route for me to finally see it. And it's a little flaky, it's clipping in and out here because it's snowing outside. But still, I think it's really cool to see live space station video streams coming from a satellite. All right, so this thing is really, really cool. I'm having a lot of fun playing around with it. And thank you again to Chandler for trading this to me. This thing is awesome. We're gonna take this out and try some other stuff with it. Um, again, it's snowing right now. I've got this massive snow pile behind me, which really limits where I can aim it. So I can't do as much with this thing right this moment, but once the snow melts, uh, once the weather's a little bit nicer, we're going to be trying some other stuff with it. We're going to try some other LNBs. We're going to see if we can hit weather satellites, if we can do other TV things with it, if we can do other satellite and space-based stuff with it. But you'll have to wait to see those because, again, it's just completely the wrong weather to do much at all with this. 
I just wanted to do something with it rather than have it sit around for six months. So we got it outside. We got some very basic TV downlinks with it, and I think that's pretty neat. Anyway, that's all I've got to say for this one. We're going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.